Now this surprised me, so just take a guess. How often do you think external interruptions occur during a school day? Maybe five times, maybe seven? Turns out now every school was slightly different, but on average kids experienced 15 external interruptions per day. Now assuming six class periods a day, that's 2.5 every class period. Now that's a huge number. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called The Big Problem with Little Interruptions to Classroom Learning by Kraft and Nussbaum. Now if you've ever done any work with me in the past, you know attention is key to learning. If you ever want to learn, remember, understand anything, focused attention is your gateway. You don't attend, you don't learn. Now interestingly, even small distractions can lead to incredible detriments in learning. Accuracy drops, memory drops, comprehension drops. Anytime you lose attention, learning just starts to suffer. Now the history of academic research looking at classroom interruptions tends to focus on what we call internal interruptions. So these are when kids talk out of turn or go off task, things that happen in the classroom. Very little work, believe it or not, has been done on external impingement. So these interruptions that come from outside, so things like the PA announcement or a phone call coming in through the classroom. How often do these controllable external interruptions take place and what impact do they then have on learning? So that's what these researchers decided to do. They said, okay, no one really knows this data, so let's go out and collect it. So they spent two years with the Providence, Rhode Island Public School District collecting data from 41 different schools to see how often and what impact do these external interruptions have. And here's what they found. So now this surprised me. So just take a guess. How often do you think external interruptions occur during a school day? Maybe five times, maybe seven? Turns out now every school was slightly different, but on average kids experienced 15 external interruptions per day. Now assuming six class periods a day, that's 2.5 every class period. Now that's a huge number. So these, these interruptions, they kind of fell into five broad categories. So those categories were one, PA announcements, those kind of whole school announcements that go out over the loudspeaker. Calls to the classroom phones, so this is staff calling teachers for information or students teacher or staff drop-ins, so when a staff member actually enters the classroom to pull out a kid, tardiness, when kids show up late for class and make a scene as they enter in, and student drop-ins, when students come in on behalf of teachers to either pass along information or get students out. So let's put some time to this. What impact is this actually having? Now, again, each interruption is slightly different, but on average, you could assume each interruption lasted for 44 seconds. And unfortunately, most interruptions lead to a snowball effect. So once the interruption is done, it takes a while to get everyone back on task. That kind of reset that often happens takes on average 57 seconds. So once you pull these numbers together and assuming that not every interruption has this snowball effect, these researchers said on average, each interruption led to 78 seconds of missed learning time. Now on its own, that might not seem like a lot, but when you extrapolate this across the whole year, it turns out kids are losing about 58.5 hours per year of learning. Now, if we assume each learning day is about five and a half hours, this means kids lose a little more than 10 days of learning every school year just for interruptions. And that's on average. Some of these schools were losing up to 20 days per year just to these external interruptions. But do they impact learning? So the final thing these researchers did is they correlated school-wide performance data on uh, standardized tests of math and English with the number of external interruptions each school had. And here's what they found. On math, there's a negative 0.53 correlation, and in English, a negative 0.48. But we've got to remember that correlation doesn't mean causation. So we can't say that because of all these external interruptions, that's why the kids are doing worse. But it's interesting to see that there is a pretty consistent pattern that the more interruptions a school has, the worse the global learning seems to be. So let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, I can kind of think of three things. The first is we have to return to making teaching time sacred again. We know attention is everything when it comes to learning. And if even small lapses in attention lead to huge impacts on that learning, then we've gotta be trying to lock down learning time again and focus that attention, keep that attention sustained for entire class periods to ensure kids have the best opportunity to do the learning we want them to be doing. Now, the second thing is if you look at all these interruptions, the majority of them are highly controllable. So here's where we say kind of idea number two, cut the cord. If a lot of these interruptions are coming from PA systems and phones, 
get rid of them. Although they might be helping with staff organization, they're not helping any student learn. So we've got to start thinking, okay, how can we do that staff organization in a more conducive way to learn it? Like maybe we only do announcements in the morning. There are set times for them. Or maybe we have a school assembly where we do announcements and everything else then is sacred teaching time. Which brings us into our third idea. This tardiness one seems to be a little bit beyond our control. That seems to be a student issue. So what kind of things can we do to minimize the distraction of these kind of interruptions? One is don't lock the door. A lot of teachers have a habit of when the bell rings, they lock the door. This means any latecomers have to knock, you have to go open it up, you have to let them in, and this just leads to a longer, bigger disruption. Two, what kind of routines can we have in place for class so that latecomers don't have to ask questions to get on track? Or three, simply don't let latecomers in. Once the bell rings, that's it. Not only is the door locked, there is no knocking, there is no answering. So it's kind of a hard angle to take on this, but it's the best way to minimize distractions. Now, here's where we're gonna wrap it up. As I said earlier, every school is different. So some schools have a lot more external uh, interruptions than other schools. So if you think this might be a problem in your school, the best thing to do is to just start taking notice of it. Believe it or not, when asked, most administrators, most principals, underestimate the number of interruptions by about 50%. They don't think it's happening as much as it's actually happening. So the first thing we have to do is gather the data and the evidence. So just spend a week or two counting each and every interruption. Once you've got that data collated, then you can decide if yes, it is a problem and we have to address it, in which case we can now bring that data to the higher ups and say, here's something we've got to deal with. Or you might find that no, maybe we overestimated it in our own head and it's not that big of a deal in our school, in which case, keep doing what we're doing. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me. That was really fun. Some of those numbers really surprised me, really eye-opening. Uh, if you like what you heard, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe below to make sure more people on YouTube can see this video. And kind of as a parting question, I just wanna ask you, do you think external interruptions are prevalent in your school or are they pretty even? And how do you handle them? What kind of systems do you have in place to make sense of these and make sure these interruptions are less distracting for your students? So put those comments below so we can start to share ideas with everyone else watching this video. Another great way to get some ideas out there. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you guys soon. Bye y'all.